So we're excited about this. We've been wanting to talk to you for a while, actually. So friends of Echo, Echo okay. speaks very highly of you. You've been helping Echo with nutrition for this fight. Nice. Uh, on our channel, we want, we want our people to know that we're fighters. We're ex-fighters. So we're not going to ask you stupid questions like other people can like how to train can go. Because you know how it is. So what we want to know, what we want the audience to know at home is, uh, we know you believe in God like us. Amen. We want yeah. to know we what both God means do. to you and how that gets you out of bed in the morning. God, God means everything, man. The relationship I had with the Lord is is why I'm here right now. Yeah. And I can I can promise you, and I can say with my heart, I wouldn't be here if I didn't if I didn't have that connection, if I didn't have that faith. I put faith first. And at times it's hard, isn't it? Because we're only human, right? So I'm trying to be as righteous as possible and I try to put faith in front of everything. So when I think of something, sometimes I think of that as a as a human and then I try to put faith first before that. You want to think about fighting, when I think about training, I put the faith first. And that's what's just guiding me and directing me, man. Like I'm here now and if I ever told you the amount of prayers and how many things I've sacrificed to get to this stage here, um, you wouldn't believe it. So that is not my work. That's no work of Ezra Taylor. That's beyond me. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a power of God in and, and him strengthening my life and you know getting me to where I am now. So it, it means a lot to me. Um, I always shy out and try and speak God's word whenever I can um, because I, I don't want it to make it seem like it's all about him, but it really is. It's not. So it's not about me. People see Ezra Taylor on the surface, right? You see me fight, do my thing, but really and truly, it is the Lord that's. I'm just a vessel, you know what I'm saying? I got the light in me and I'm just doing what I'm doing. So, and I believe that this is my destiny and it's my calling, man. So, I'm just grateful to God as always. You got the best secure so, guy in the world, then? Oh, uh, yeah, no, nothing can touch me, man. There's, no, there's nothing at all. So, what Psalms 18 verses 6 mean to you? <laughs> tell us, tell us, man. Well, my wife, I use oh, yeah. Philippians 4 verses 13. I'll do all things through Christ. Bro, he strengthens me. Mine's Exodus, my gown. Mine's Exodus 14 14. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that beautiful. What's that one? Stand still and know who I am. Amen. Strong. Amen. And mine. And what you all explain. God is it God's on my side. What can a man do to me? That's that's what my psalm is. Um, I'm, quote, I'm quoting a many of them because I feel like a lot of them relate to life, right? Like you just went through yeah. yours, went through yours. Yeah. Mine's mine. It makes sense for boxing, but it makes sense for life as well. It means like not to have fear. You know what I'm saying? Stand strong in even in the storm at any time. And I, and I, I keep it. I really keep it my heart, man. I'm not. I'm, I'm I'm probably one of the realest people in this boxing game. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be unique. I want to be different. If I weren't, then I'll just. I, like, I think I said it the other day because I, I do services here and there. Well, sorry, I go to services and I speak here and there. Uh, later on, hopefully, I'd like to start doing it. Yeah, yeah, yo, hopefully, I'd like to do it. You see Andre Wood? I'm a musician, I'm a drummer. Oh, you see, yo, yeah. we're multi talented, man. You see, you see what God does nah, to us? To be a pastor, be oh, oh well, look at that. Yeah, beautiful, it's beautiful I thing. Amazing, yeah, man, I'd like to do that. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. That's my two foot angel behind the camera. Big God, man. To the Lord. God bless. Took me to church. I got saved and accidentally I was in Bible school within six months. Oh, look at that. And I came through Bible school and then found myself on the stage talking to people. Miracle. Yeah. I'm a miracle. And I bet it's the best thing yet, right? Yeah. Ever. Without her, I won't be here. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I love that. Oh, hey, damn. You, 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 came, <laughs> you came many years after. You can't cook <laughs> like she can. Uh, anyway. Oh, ooh, that, that's, that's a, a, that's a big thing. Family. Yeah, man. We unite together. 100%. 100%. No, 100%. We're brothers and sisters yeah, in, yeah. in harmony in every, in, in every sense, in single way. Even when I fight. Like, I've got nothing against my opponent. No. Not at all. It's a job. Not, none of my opponents at all. Um, it's a job. I go in there and I pray that he's able to come out and he don't have any long-lasting injuries and he can go back to his family and I can go back to mine as well. You know, like, this this is a calling for me to be able to get to where I need to get to, which is becoming world champion, right? Then after that, or oh, whilst doing so, I'm able to spread the light. That light is of the word. That light is being righteous because you can do it. And you know, like me, I used to live in a world of sin, man. I live in a world of sin, but I used to live a life of sin. Every day I used to sin. And I never used to have any conscience of it. I can't remember the last time I sinned now. And you know how pure and nice I feel? The clarity that I have from God because of that 
it's amazing and that's what's making me be able to focus on the task at hand which is training mm. putting in 110 percent every single day without having to worry about what i've done that it may come back on me mm. my conscience you know what i'm saying because mm. that's what you need in life as well you need a conscience you know what i'm saying do things for good people do things out of the heart don't give to receive and it's also going to come back to you as well 100 percent. what you're saying there is don't just share the message be the message right? be the message man there's no point trying to share it because sometimes you, you sometimes you got to practice what you preach you know people will pull you up people hey, these cameras nowadays people will pull you up you say one thing and you don't do it you act the way you're meant to you act accordingly they will pull you up you're a hypocrite no you know you can't be a hypocrite with god's word man you've got to really live what you're saying and if you don't if you're not living what you're saying don't say it you know what i'm saying shut up <laughs> listen let me ask you though right now we talk longer right every fighter a bit controversial thing but every fighter starts dysfunctional to get in a ring to be hit and to hit mm. starts dysfunctional then it becomes positive all right it's like negative becomes a positive it becomes channeled we know god is just strength tell us a little bit before you got into all what made you go into boxing what was the thing that guided that direction i'll be honest it was nothing in particular man i, I no. come from a family with no fighting background okay. um no sporting background no one really did sports in my in my um in my family and what happened was um one of my friends invited me to come to boxing one day mm. on a saturday morning just to keep fit class i had energy for days i tried to do all the other sports you could think of football t tennis basketball all that stuff and i was no good at it and i went for, i went to the the class and my friend wasn't there so i had to pluck up the little bit of courage that i had and go by myself and step through the door literally my, my mom dropped me off my, i see my mom wasn't there uh, my, my friend wasn't there I tried to ring my mom like mom can you pick me up he's like she's like i'm already gone i'm gonna come get you in an hour <laughs> so i had to go and firm it yeah and, I, and I, that's that was the the start of something special i was like bro and that was it it was hard man i could hit I, it was so hard i was outside i was my hands was on my knees Mm. I could hear the heartbeat in my ears. I was dying. I was finished. But then one thing was, is that what I liked about it was I, I dug in. I, I dug deep and I put in the work and I survived and I made it out. Because when, when you're training hard, sometimes you think you're going to die. For real. It ain't no joke. But when you put in the work and then you're like, oh, this is a, the satisf uh, satisfaction and the gratification you get is something other than other than what I could even fathom on doing any other sport. Mm. And then that's what made me just keep going back, going back, going back, going back. But I stopped for a bit because I started getting beat up in sparring. Okay, it happens to all of us. Yeah, I started getting beat up in sparring. I was like, I didn't sign up for none of this because at this time I don't want to be no world champion. I just want to get fit. Mm -hmm. If that, I just want to do this for the sake of doing it. And then I, I went to the gym, got some muscles, came back for them people who mashed me up, hit them hard. Power. Hit it, you know what I'm saying? I came back and then now it's just a rolling stone, man. it's like a snowball effect. And now I'm here. Sometimes I sit down and, like, you know, like, fight week this is the time where i reflect like after this i'll go home i'll go for a long walk i walk around the areas that i went to my primary school and just reflect and look around like wow man like I, other people look at me and feel like i'm nowhere to me i feel like i'm i'm, I'm where i'm where i am where i prayed for where and i couldn't even imagine this man so it's amazing and that's why i always say i take the opportunity with two hands and i can talk with confidence because I've had to work so hard to get here. Mm. Anyone who knows me knows I work hard mm. and I sacrifice more. And I, I know I need to keep sacrificing more and more and more. Mm. But again, that's that also comes down to my faith. Because I'm, since I'm sacrificing, I'm giving a bit of myself that I want, right? Mm. That's a temptation. Mm. But the only reason why I can resist the temptation because I have faith in my heart. Mm. All the carnal desires that other people have in, in life, I don't have that mm. because I'm really fulfilled by by the Lord, you know what I'm saying? So mm. all these things have kind of spiraled in, in, into, into play. Mm. My manager's an archbishop. I met him, I didn't even know he was an archbishop. I didn't even know that. So, and then I went to the wars in 2021 and I got baptized. These are the things that people don't really even see. And how, I couldn't imagine that. You think I put it on paper that I wanted to do that? Mm. No, but God's got a different it's type of plan. Written. It's all written. It's written, yeah. So you just got to follow that, that pathway what God's put down. 100%. You know I mean? And that's it, and that's all I'm doing, and that's why faith. I, I, I rely heavily on faith because I just know that yo, it's not me, it's faith. And I you're couldn't, your I couldn't behind make it. faith, like it says in James. That's all right. the time, my actions are always behind faith. I don't do anything other than that. I don't, I don't step out of line. I try to be as righteous as possible, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not, and it's working. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I go to bed peaceful. I wake up peaceful. 
I, w I wake up feeling good, uh, enlightened, and strength and everything. So why would I not keep doing that, you know? And I feel like there's more opportunities for even the brothers like you to link up and sisters as well. Mm. Like, it's a it's a beautiful thing. If you didn't ask me that question, I wouldn't even be talking about I had a You know what I'm saying? Question, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know it is. We feel it. We feel it. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah. So we got that question. Yeah. yeah. You know I, mean? I appreciate I that. that. I knew the first time that I asked, that you spoke and the first time you popped up, I knew where the conversation was going. Yeah. Feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any of you ain't gonna do this justice and there's people waiting to talk to you. We're gonna do a pong. We're gonna do it. We're gonna we need that. Right, we need that. We need to sit down and do it. Like, do a hundred percent. I just wanna I just wanna finish with this. This is what I heard today, right? I had a preacher recently come to the church in Leeds where I'm from. We are big services, like two thousand people in our church. Mm. And he says that most people get out of bed every single day and live for their function. Their function is what pays the bills. They're not necessarily happy with their job, but really what you should be doing is waking up every single day and living for your purpose and your function should pay for your purpose. And what I'm hearing Amazing. from you is that you're living your purpose That's it. And, every, and all your function is providing that purpose. It's, it's a byproduct, it's a, and that's what I see it as, man. I, I sacrifice, like I said, the, the, the buzzword here is sacrifice because I mm. sacrifice quite a lot. And I say in all these other interviews and whatever else, like if you're doing boxing for money, you're a fool. Mm. Because mm. me, my purpose is, at first I was like, yeah, boxing, all right, cool, world champion, mm. and whatever. My purpose is to make an impact. Mm. And that's in many ways. Right now, it's me being God-fearing. It's me spreading that word. It's it's me being a, a role model boxer, being able to be a professional and, and box and do what I need to do, whilst also trying to conduct myself in the, in the, in the highest level. But making sure people understand that it's not just me alone. You know what I'm saying? It's God. You know what I'm saying? The unbelievers will understand them. Exactly. See the yeah. Coming through. Exactly. And again, I, and one of the things that would make me the happiest man, one of the happiest men, mm. is that if I turn a, a non-believer to a believer because of my actions, right? Mm. Not because I'm saying you, yo, you need to go to church and do this. Mm. I don't think I've said that once to anyone. Mm. But I just say what I need to say, and you can see it, and it will speak throughout what I do. When I'm victorious on Saturday, mm. you will see that, yo, it's not me. It's God's divine intervention that's got me here mm -hmm. and hopefully that will also spark something in someone else to go and you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. find their journey find their, find their path mm -hmm. and um, that would be an amazing thing because it's each one teach one right mm -hmm. and like I said I've got my manager who's, a, who's an archbishop and, and he's right there you see what I'm saying that, that man there if people you would you he wouldn't even know mm -hmm. the, the, the strength he has and again if, if it wasn't for him I don't know where I would even be in terms of my faith and my religion you know mm -hmm. so yeah, I want to end it on that because I can chat for for years and then. That, that's yeah. pretty amazing. We didn't even talk about boxing. Or, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to wish him good luck. For, well, at least uh, you know who he is. You know who I am, you know man. You know, you know what I'm about. And we're going to link up and we're going to do this yeah, just for oh, the fourth yeah. podcast. 100%, yeah. man. 100%. We're going to check out there. Expect big things on Saturday. Yeah, big big things. things. Tune in. Watch out. 100%. Peace. Final round. Hit them up, man. That's it.